Hello, and welcome to the video in which I finally show you the entire process of this piece. I started out with the sketch and I started with the Aquafine watercolor inks. I'm a huge fan of these inks and I love them and I really enjoy starting my sketches with a basic watercolor wash. I also used the Cerulean Hue and the Ultramarine Blue Dark um, and mixed those up and I created a magenta and a purple and added some water in those. I painted the entire piece with water um, and got that nice and damp and then I started a basic wash of the pink to the blue going left to right or right to left. I don't know why I said that. And then I pulled out the fluorescent pink which I was so excited to use and basically kind of based a lot of this painting around the idea of fluorescent pink. And I started by filling in the background and I just started with the right side. The right side of this painting was going to be more of the pink side and then it moved to the left where it was blue. And I, this part was really intimidating. This was a very complex painting idea for me. And so if you are trying to start doing more complex ideas, I totally understand how intimidating it can be. It really helped to have a reference. And I really tried to break things down into basic, simple shapes to start with. You can see I started with just that base pink of the background and then the hair is like two shades right now. Um, I started by keeping everything pretty flat and just trying to add in certain areas where I saw them and I'm not worried too much about blending at this point. I'm mostly using the FW paints, the neons, but I'm also mixing in some white, uh, also the FW white, I believe, and a few other colors, ultramarine blue um, and some darker blues along with that to create some of the purples as well. So I really enjoy being able to mix all these different paints uh, or inks together because you can really adjust um, the colors and uh, opacities of certain different ones by the fact that they're cross compatible, which is really great. I tried to lay in the eyes. I really needed to lay in the overall structure of the painting before I got too detailed with anything. It can be really tempting to get sucked into the detail on one area, but that can be really hard um, because then if you realize that area is like in the wrong place or you have to move it, I did have to move a couple things or resize a couple things during this painting. And if I had spent a really long time on them before I had to do that, that would have been even more frustrating than it already was. So. I'm continuing, I'm using a angled shader brush. This is really useful to use when you're first starting um, laying down your colors because you can get really big chunks but you can also get into fine details. So I highly recommend using an angled shader brush when you are starting to lay things down. I went ahead and made the backgrounds more opaque and now you can see that I'm really starting to actually get more into building the details and creating different tones of colors. So at this point I decided to start putting in the detail of the eye because I felt like overall things were in the right place and kind of starting from there because that was the middle and from there I just sort of jumped around based on where I felt like I had the like emotional ability to, to tackle. Um, but one thing that I, I found really helpful was because this was acrylic, I really could layer so much. So I realized that things were kept going darker than I needed them to be. I wanted them to be lighter, be more pastel. So I was able to just literally like glaze light pink over that whole area of the face that you just saw me do that. And it lightened that whole thing up without messing up the actual shading underneath, which is amazing. I was also able to do that a lot with some of the hair areas. I was able to lay down white as a highlight and then glaze over more translucent color to tint that color. So that's kind of something that you can see me doing um, on and off here. And I use that coat, that technique throughout the piece because this piece doesn't have any true whites in it. All of the whites in this piece are actually like a light pink. So by adding in white and then glazing over the top of it, I was able to get a lot more subtleties in those lighter areas without making anything actually white when it wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> I went in for the eyelashes with a really fine brush and that was really fun because in the reference photo I had false lashes on but they were really visible on one side. Not much on the other so it was kind of unbalanced but I enjoyed putting in all of that detail. At this point you can see things are starting to take shape a little bit more especially now that that like center eye is done and I'm trying to get the nose in the right position and this is where I start realizing that there is something majorly off about the left face and how it overlaps and I know this isn't going to be perfect but it was definitely really misaligned and so I had to start moving the lips um, over 
to meet the nose because they were way misaligned. So I painted over that, um, repainted the lips, and then repainted back over that with the blue so that they looked like they were behind the hair. This entire piece has so much overlapping of color and of different facial features that are being seen through with different things, like a double exposure style thing, that having these inks and having the ability to have them be really opaque and also really translucent without the paint being really thick in certain areas made this possible like because doing this in watercolor would have been really difficult as well because I really had to build up a lot on top of certain things I can't, can't even imagine trying to do this without being able to add in a lighter color that would be mind blowing. <laughs> so at this point I am mostly going over and really trying to tighten up a lot of the details, although I have not done that left eye, and so I, I finally do the left eye. Um, but I am really just trying to like create and tighten up all these little details that get the skin blended. Um, you can see that it's come a long way from the beginning, but what, what we started with, which was those basic chunks of shapes, those are still there. So it's really, really important to start with those those big areas because it makes it so much less intimidating. And then you just add like sh like shading and subtleties and things like that. Um, for the left eye, again, I needed it to look like it was underneath that hair. So I went ahead and painted the whole thing and then painted the hair back on top of it using a translucent blue, the fluorescent neon mixed in with a couple others. Um, and yeah, at that point it was mostly just about final little details and finishing things signing it. Um, I covered the whole thing with a matte medium and the reason I did that is because I used different mediums. I used FW ink and System 3 ink and they have different finishes and that helped matte everything out. And this was the finished piece. I cut it out and then as you saw in the previous section where I talked about the mixed media, I stuck it onto this super shiny painted wooden board and I think it came out really cool. I think the metallic really helps to kind of like draw your eye in and I think it plays really well with the overall painting and I would not have been able to make this painting without the neon inks so it was really exciting to be able to play with these so I really hope that this helped you that it helped teach you some techniques about mixed media specifically with ink gave you some inspiration um thank you for watching and uh yeah I hope you have a great day and make some beautiful art bye